Thanks for joining us for today's AVST Live webinar. Our topic today is what's next for the Nortel PBX customers. This is Ann Rood with AVST Marketing. And um, I will go ahead and introduce our presenters. But before I do that, just want to let you know a couple of quick things. Uh, we will make these slides available to you. And in addition, we promised a copy of the white paper written by Phil with the same title as our webinar. So look for a follow-up email from us with those items. And in addition, we will include a link to the recording. And of course, um, you're welcome to type your questions in during the webinar. We'll have some time for Q&A at the end. And so with that, I will go ahead and have Hardy get us going. Great. Thank you, Ann, and welcome everybody to the webinar today. We're honored to have Phil at home uh, today conducting uh, most of the webinar. I'm going to quickly uh, give an overview of AVST and then after Phil's done, just uh, highlight some of the solutions that we have that we think synchronize very well with uh, the topic of the webinar. And then, of course, uh, we'll go over a list of resources and contact information for both AVST and Phil directly and then open it up for questions. Um, we're honored to have Phil with us today. Uh, Phil is a uh, industry luminary. A consultant and of course has had uh, extensive experience with Avaya and Nortel um, having worked at both and we'll cover some of that in when he uh, does uh, when he when we get to his section um, so just to give a quick overview on ABST uh, I believe many of you know who we are but just to highlight it we're the leading independent developer of enterprise class unified communication software um, that's our focus uh, we're known for industry-leading scalability and interoperability which really uh, is facilitating uh, globally um, the enterprise uh, migration um, towards the cloud and Microsoft and, of course, this large trend towards centralization, which we see uh, with many, many customers and prospects as we, as we, uh, as we get out there, in the, out there to, to meet customers and opportunities. Um, we're known for, of course, our best-of-breed UC application stack, which includes uh, messaging, mobility, call processing, call center, and business process. Very... Uh, a strong, large, prestigious channel globally um, that uh, I'm sure anyone who's interested in talking to AVST would be uh, quite happy to uh, engage with. And of course, a very large install base of customers globally, uh, uh, totaling uh, upwards of 20 million. So just as a highlight, you know, what drives us as a company, um, and this is very relevant, obviously, the topic of, of today is to design, deliver, and support, uh, you know, world-class communication solutions that improve the productivity of enterprises. And we view enterprises as having really three specific areas where we, where we focus around individual worker productivity, team or group productivity, and of course, the enterprise as a whole. And then of course, leveraging the value of uh, the existing and evolving IT infrastructure. The future-proofing value proposition of AVST really seems to be resonating with customers as they're, and, and clearly that is very relevant to the topic of, of today with Phil. Um, and that's what, what we do every day, and that's what gets us very excited. Um, you know, why do customers buy AVST? It's very simple. Uh, number one, we meet some requirements they have today. Most medium and large enterprises, uh, voice remains mission critical, and uh, we do mission critical voice applications, uh, frankly, better than anybody in the market. Um, that, that is, cr again, very relevant to the topic of today, which I'll let Phil cover uh, in great detail. Um, number two, we help customers align with key trends and, and, and add to their existing infrastructure best of breed, next gen, UC capabilities, and that includes uh, many of the, the, the solutions that are listed on this slide. And then, of course, with the interoperability of the AVST platform, what we're doing is providing um, your customers, our customers, with a bridge to the digital future, facilitating their migration to the cloud, their next generation IP solution, Skype for Business, wherever um, they, as, as an organization, um, from an IT strategy standpoint, decide to go. So with that, without any further ado, I'd like to hand it off to Phil. Phil, good morning, and uh, we're excited to have you here and look forward to hearing uh, your presentation. Thank you, Hardy. Uh, it's great to be here, and it's it's great to talk about you know one of clearly my favorite subjects, which is you know the CS one thousand, uh, absolutely an outstanding platform, and you know one that I, clearly I was very involved in driving. In, in nine years, I was the CTO CSO at Nortel, and then um, very much in managing the transition of Nortel into Avaya. Uh, I think I had a great impact on the customers and where they went. So my focus today, um, can we jump to the next slide, please? Uh, my focus today, my focus today is on the number 30 million. 
So this is really the number of this is the number of Nortel endpoints that are out there. Uh, kind of a minimum number. It's probably somewhere between 30 and 40, maybe even as high as 45 million. Uh, but they're the Nortel-based endpoints that are still being used in the marketplace. Those CS1000 endpoints um, around the globe, um, you know, clearly in North America, um, Nortel was equal in size to Avaya. Um, very large uh, number of users, a uh, number of users also in other countries like the UK and, and other locations. Uh, for those 30 plus million endpoints, there's an interesting challenge coming, which is where do you from where you are. So if we if we look at uh, next slide please. Sorry about that Phil. Here we go. Thank you. So, you know, the the reason for this is that the Nortel communication server, uh, you know, the CS1000 highly functional, um, great capabilities, incredibly reliable. Um, also, you know, throughout its time frame, incredibly cost effective, and that's why, you know, very much used in a wide range of, of applications from traditional business, healthcare, um, large administration, government. So, the net of this is, uh, next slide, please. You know, it, it's there because it just works. It just works. Um, you know, I, I talk to Nortel customers that have had a system, and that system has been up and running without interruption for 10, 12, 15 years. Um, it's highly reliable, uh, put together right and installed right, does exactly what you need done. Uh, the second thing for a lot of you uh, that have a Nortel system is it was paid for. Um, it may have been paid for, you know, before 2010, um, you bid maybe an upgrade in 2011 or 2013, um, and that system is now paid for. And the real question that most of you are facing is, what do we do now? So if you, you look at where you are with your CS1000 investment, uh, what's clear is that long term, that investment probably is going to be replaced by an alternative. Um, a first set of alternatives are the what I would call traditional telecom alternatives. Um, Cisco, Avaya, NEC, Mitel. Um, these are the large um, traditional telephony vendors um, who are offer, offering products in the marketplace. Um, clearly Avaya has a set of migration options for CS1000 customers that are you know, built into that uh, CS1000 upgrade strategy that Avaya rolled out way back in 2011, 2013. Um, other options, though, like NEC, Mitel, and Cisco are also there. But the real challenge for you today is that if it were just as simple as saying, well, we're going to buy another telephone system, it wouldn't be a challenging transition. But the reality is the world is changing. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Um, just yesterday, I did a podcast as part of the UC Strategies, BC Strategies team, where we talked about the disruptions that are happening in this industry. And, you know, cloud is a clear disruption that's happening. You see companies like Vonage Business, like 8x8, and others that are actually build, going upscale to where, at a cloud level, they can provide the services that you need. Um, but even beyond that, we're seeing the emergence of totally divergent communication technologies, like Skype for Business. Um, we see from Google things like Dialpad. Um, and you're even seeing some of the social systems, social products beginning to introduce communications. So one of the things we agreed on, the, our, on our podcast yesterday was that the industry is in the midst of incredible upheaval. Um, in fact, the reality is that this industry is probably going to look very different in two or three years. So the challenge for all of us is how do you go from where you are today which is basically the CS1000 investment on the left that's highly reliable, highly dependable, very cost effective for your business, to something on the right that may or may not be the right decision. For example, you know, if you buy a telephone system today and you're going to amortize that over seven years, in five years are you going to be comfortable with that investment and its continued value to your business? So the result of this is that 
in many ways, you with a Nortel solution today, as are you know other solutions in the telephony space, kind of between a, a rock and a hard place. In some ways, you're being asked to change and mi migrate your current solution to manage changes, but you don't want to jump into a solution that's not the right solution for your business. So you know, you first thing you can do is you can buy a new voice telephony system. Um, you know, full rip and replace. Um, it may lock you into a collaboration strategy. Um, for example, if you go to Cisco, what's really been clear is you're not just buying a Cisco telephony system, you're buying into the Cisco Spark strategy for collaboration. Um, and it also requires you to justify the investment time frame. Um, you know, one of the things that I did at Enterprise Connect was did a session about how cloud is going to reduce the cost of telephony and actually had uh, major players like Microsoft, 8 by Ring Central. Uh, respond, and everyone agreed that the price of telephony in the cloud is going to come down dramatically 12, 18, 24 months. So if you lock yourself into an investment today, a new investment, a new long-term investment, are you going to be looking at something that's much more expensive than you could have done in an alternative way a few years from now? Secondly, replacing the CS1K core and keeping the phones. There are some options to do that out there, but in many ways they look just like buying a new voice telephony system and in fact probably are not a good alternative because just retaining the phones doesn't really save you that much investment and you really have to worry about reliability and support with some of those smaller systems. You can jump to the cloud today. Clearly that's an option. Um, minimizes your capital investment to just the phone capital. But of course, then you have to worry about things like availability. If you system today, you're probably enjoying pretty close to five nines availability. Um, in fact, if you actually look at when your system went down last, you probably can't tell. Cloud systems typically are advertising three nines, which is also true of, of one of the last options, um, not last in terms of uh, priority, but last on this list, which is to jump to Skype for Business. Uh, you know, Microsoft is really focused on enabling telephony communications through their Skype for Business offers um, with both the E3 as an option and the E5 Cal, including a cloud PBX. Um, but that requires an Office 365 commitment. Um, if you're a healthcare facility, you're not buying Office and the full Microsoft suite for all of your employees. So it really puts you in a difficult position. Plus, you're back to that you know, commitment of only 99.9% .9 of time, percent availability and that's only on the communication system. It doesn't include things like your own network, et cetera. So the real challenge we see is you know, where is CS1K going forward? How long can you stick with your investment? So you know, a little brief history. You know, clearly, CS1K started as a pure IP PBX, uh, moved to include TDM. Uh, obviously, Nortel went bankrupt. And then we see the Avaya history of really doing you know, good releases to bring the CS1K into the future. And I think Avaya is to be commended for really doing right by the Nortel customer base that came became part of Avaya. Uh, however, the future going forward is a little less clear, and especially a little less clear over time, because Avaya actually have said that while CS1K, the, the release 7.6, uh, they haven't said it's absolutely the last release, but they've generally said that's the last feature release they plan on doing for CS1K. Um, they continue to do service packs that are focused on security and other features, primarily at the OS level, but from a feature perspective, functionality perspective, really not adding on to the product going forward, which, which quite frankly is, is probably for most of you quite fine, because the way you use the CS1K is as a telephony system. And Quite frankly, who needs another telephony feature today? So the real question then becomes, what does your timing look like for your CS1K? Do you need to make a decision today to do something different? Or can you use this platform for the next two or three years until you really clarify what's the right solution in this next generation of platforms that's coming out for your business? Um, having said that, there are some challenges. Um, one challenge that's really clear is call pilot. Um, Call Pilot was built on Windows 2, 2003, Windows Server 2003. Um, it has reached end of support. Um, we can call it end of life euphemistically, but it's really end of support. Um, Windows 2 Server 2003 end of support is really a challenge for organizations uh, because what you're getting is no longer any updates. 
you lose compliance capability, it becomes a security risk. Um, that can actually give you a non-compliance on an audit. Um, it can be a way for people to hack into your organization because a Windows 2003 server actually exposes certain security risks. Um, so this is one of those areas where you really have to resolve it today. So the question then becomes, what do you do going forward? What is the best way to manage, mitigate the risk over the next three years, two, three, four years, maybe in five or six years for some of you, until you get to the point where there's a clear alternative in the market that's the right alternative to jump to and invest in. And what I would like to argue is that the best way to do this is what we've called the 3E e strategy. The first is to extend the life of your CS1K, to make sure that you've extended it, you've got in place the right components to do that. The second is to enhance it with services that can deliver real business value for your user community today. And the third is to provide a methodology to evolve any investments you make as you go into those new platforms in the future. So if we look at this strategy, the first strategy in terms of extending the value starts with that Windows Server 2003. So you know, one great alternative here is to look at the, the CXE product from AVST. Uh, it's a voicemail platform. Um, clearly, we're going to talk it's a bit more, and Hardy would probably suggest that it, it's much more than a voicemail platform. But what it can do is it's a literally a plug-in replacement for CallPilot that from your user perspective absolutely is a total emulation of what they have. So your users won't even notice that anything changed. Um, their mailboxes will feel the same. Their commands will be the same. Everything will continue as before. But what you've done by doing this is you solve that security risk of the Windows 2003 server in a very elegant way with a minimal investment. Having done that, you now can begin to think about enhancing your services. So you know, the platform that you do now for voicemail can do a lot more for your organization because not only can it do traditional voicemail, it can do fully featured unified messaging. It can provide integration with mobility devices. It also provides a really unique personal assistant capability for your users. Some of these things that your users have been hearing about, you can now deliver to them without replacing your core communication system. And it gives you automatic call distribution, call center capabilities, um, and actually enables you to start building in some of those CEBP or communication enabled business processes functionality that can really add core value to your business. But the key to this is not just extending and enhancing, it really is that point of evolving. And in Evolve, it's really being able to, regardless of the choice you make for your next generation platform, be able to continue that investment forward that you make that extends and enhances your, your, uh, your CS1000 into that new world. So for example, uh, if we did a survey on this, on this call of end users, um, I'd be willing to bet that at least 50 um, be willing to bet probably at least 60, maybe even 70% of you are actively looking at Skype for Business as your collaboration alternative. Um, that's because you have, you have um, enterprise licenses with Microsoft. Um, whether you have a standard e license or you've moved to Office 365 and the cloud-based um, pricing that Microsoft is really pushing in the marketplace, in either of those you get significant Skype for Business functionality included in your license from Microsoft. So your users are going to want to, are you starting to think about using that? Your IT department is starting to think about deploying it. Um, Microsoft is very focused on having an incredibly cost-effective telephony offer cloud-based as an extension of Skype for Business. Uh, two or three years from now, you may decide you want to go to that. But one of the beauties of this migration from your CS1K is you can continue to keep your voicemail system, your voice messaging system, as an independent from the Skype for Business and the Microsoft Cloud. Uh, this is actually something that very few organizations have actively thought about, which is the minute you actually integrate your voicemail with your email, and you put your voicemail into the email store where your voice where your emails are stored, your voicemails now become essentially part of the discovery process for emails. Um, so just imagine for a moment that instead of just having Hillary Clinton's emails, we could have listened to all of her voicemails in the discovery process that, that the Congress went through. Um, clearly having voicemails and emails not a good idea. 
um, in today's world, you want to keep those separate so they're not part of the same process. So regardless of the platform you choose, these capabilities, the enhanced capabilities, the personal assistant, all of those will carry forward into that new environment. So you know, I believe fundamentally, and having looked at this, looked at the industry, talked to a number of people, I think that the CS1000 uh, investment, basically by adding in AVST to it, really to solve those current problems to extend, to enhance, and to evolve is a great way to maintain your CS1K platform to give you the time to make the decisions you need to make and eventually pick the right direction for your company for this whole next generation of communication and collaboration solutions. Um, so, you know, one way to think about the CS1K, and I, I know some of you may have heard this, is, you know, oh, you have to get out of it. It's a, kind of the forced march. Uh, an alternative way to think about it is by doing the right things to stand and enhance you really can have a rapid road to success that can extend not just to 2020 but beyond where you can use the platform, continue to use it for the key telephony values your company's using until you get ready to make that jump to you know, the cloud future, the Microsoft Skype for Business future, or one of the other alternatives. So all in all, I think it's a very exciting opportunity to really extend the value, enhance the value, and eventually evolve your communication solutions to the right solution, a solution for your business. So with that, I'll throw it back to Hardy. Thank you, Phil. That was excellent. Um, so what I thought I would do just quickly, to Phil's point, um, and yes, Phil, you're correct. I would not characterize our platform as a voicemail platform, but uh, <laughs> um, it does absolutely have tremendous voicemail capabilities. And of course, in the context of this short-term uh, critical issue for Nortel customers around the call pilot, uh, we clearly uh, have a solution for that, um, that 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 meets their needs, and of course puts them on to your 3E strategy, which uh, which of course we think is a great idea. Um, just as a highlight for everybody, you know, we we focus in four core areas of the UC stack. Uh, interoperability is something that, of course, AVST has historically been uh, known for, renowned for, I guess. Um, of course, voice is, a, is an area that we, we put a lot of focus into and, have again, have historically put focus into. And then, you know, a mo you know we're really working on a mobile-first strategy, which includes both mobile delivery as well as cloud delivery, and I'll talk about cloud in just a minute. And then, of course, moving into business process, which we think of both in the context of team and business productivity. And then below that, of course, what we want to do, and the way we view the world is, and as, as our customers do, is we want you to be able to consume the technology in any form factor that you want, whether it's you know, via the, uh, a premise solution, uh, a hybrid solution, a cloud solution, and of course, have the ability to change your mind. And so today, in fact, we announced um, the availability of our product via the cloud. And so for customers that are uh, existing AVST customers on-prem, um, they, they, when they're ready, they can move to the cloud, or if you as a Nortel customer would like to consume AVST's technology from the cloud, that is something that is now available actually as of today, which is, which is very exciting. Next slide, please. This slide highlights for you some of the granul more, more granularity. And, and you know, from a voice perspective, um, Phil focused on messaging. Um, that's clearly an area that we have tremendous expertise, as we mentioned. Um, but we, all, we think of the world really um, in a couple of different angles. One is, of course, around the messaging um, scenario, and the other is around the, the call processing scenario. And, and typically, in medium and large enterprise, our experience is, is that both of these voice applications are mission critical. And so our focus, in addition to feature flexibility and feature richness, has been around scalability, uh, architecture of the platform, et cetera, to enable the customer, enable you as our customer to, to, move, to, to be able to quickly and rapidly deploy the technology and then, of course, scale it, centralize your applications, move to the cloud, et cetera. So those, that's our focus in that area. Around uh, mobility, uh, as Phil alluded to, uh, a couple of highlights here for you. Um, we have a very powerful mobile client, uh, which includes the ability to access your messages securely. And, and then, of course, as Phil mentioned, we have a very powerful set of speech solutions and personal assistance, speech-enabled personal assistance solutions that, um, frankly, run on the, you know, the best technology in the industry from a speech standpoint. And we've been doing speech for, for well over a decade, so we're really experts in speech and it's something that our customers, you know, it's a pleasant, um, I'm not going to say surprise, but it's a pleasant uh, re revelation 
functionality of the platform that they can actually speech enable various elements of their of their uh, unified communications uh, stack. One of the areas, of course, we see a lot of uh, interest in that is around automated attendance, where you know the traditional touchstone automated attendant, um, well, very powerful and able to to you know, uh, enable uh, a significant amount of calls to be routed quickly. Um, in a mobile world, it's a bit of a challenge when you're driving to try to, you know, punch in a number or somebody's name or whatever. And speech is a very, very powerful tool in that space. So we see a lot of customer interest and certainly increased demand in that area. And then moving into business process, we just recently, a year ago, launched a new product called TeamQ, which is an informal call center um, uh, capability is designed to support work groups, IT uh, teams, etc. And we've had tremendous amount of interest at, uh, in this product. It seems to be hitting a niche where you know a large uh, you know defined contact center is, is too expensive or too complicated. But there are uh, work groups or teams within organizations where uh, contact center like capabilities, queuing, uh, information access, and integration into the call flow, etc., is very valuable. And there seems to, we've we've seen just a, a really a high a very high level interest in that area. And then as Phil alluded to, business process integration. This is something that the platform is is you know, absolutely designed to do, has an open development framework so that you can take, solve your CS, solve your, excuse me, solve your call pilot problem um, relative to Windows Server uh, 2003 end of life, and really plan for doing some enhanced business process integrations uh, leveraging the same platform. And this is an area that we assist our customers all over the world doing on a regular basis, and, uh, and, and it ends up being some very, very interesting and positive outcomes in that area. Um, and then just to highlight on the next slide, you know, interoperability. This is uh, the kind of the core value proposition of the AVST platform. And as Phil um, Phil mentioned around evolution, you know, what you're doing when you're getting the AVST platform is you are enabling, you're setting your organization up to be able to pivot to whatever direction you want to in the future, whether that's you know upgrading to the latest and greatest Avaya, uh, moving to the cloud, moving to Microsoft and the cloud, um, etc. So. Um, and so, you know, we're very proud of that, and that's something that we make a significant investments on the engineering side to support. So, from a resource standpoint, we've got some really great resources for you to uh, thank you for attending um, our webinar. And of course, I think you'll find them to be, uh, you know, very relevant to possibly what you're thinking about or the, the issues you're you're dealing with today. Um, <clears throat> number one, um, Phil has written a white paper that is, uh, you know, thematically consistent with this webinar. Um, it's what's next for Nortel customers, and uh, it's a really great, really well-written uh, white paper. Um, I personally have read it a couple times and was very impressed. Um, number two, we have a, a brand new white paper around five steps to future-proofing your communications. Again, thematically synchronizing very well with uh, with uh, Phil's 3E strategy. And then uh, we also have, uh, uh, we just recently announced or released a Windows uh, 2003 um, end of support blog just to highlight for customers um, the criticality of addressing this issue in the near term. It's not something that you would want to, uh, you know, not address, particularly if you're in a, in a regulated industry where, you know, compliance is, is going to be a critical issue. Uh, but, 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 as, but also, as uh, Phil mentioned, you know, important from a security standpoint. So with that, um, I wanted to just first of all thank you, uh, Phil, and speaking for Phil, thank you. Uh, this is Phil's contact information, and of course you'll have ability to get access to this deck. And uh, Phil, as I mentioned before, we've you know we've worked with Phil uh, both from a you know sort of aligned from a manufacturer standpoint as well as uh, taking his input and wisdom uh, in the context of customer engagement. So looking forward, uh, hopefully you'll take advantage of that as well. And uh, from our perspective, of course, you know, it's uh, our contact information is just www.avst.com, and uh, we appreciate your attendance. And with that, Anne, I will open it up for questions. Thank you. Absolutely. Great. So um, if anyone would like to submit a question, there, you should see the question box toward the bottom. We've got um, several already in here. And um, so we'll go ahead and do that. And just before, uh, before we start the question, just as a quick reminder, um, look for that follow-up email from us with a copy of these slides as well as the resources that Hardy just mentioned. So first question. And Anne, uh, may I ask? Oh, yes. Sorry, may, and it will also be the, the presentation will be archived so they can listen to it if they weren't able to attend. Correct. Is that right? Yes, the okay. recording. Yeah, that takes a little bit longer to load. But yes, there will be uh, the recording as well. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, so, yes, so that first question, uh, does AVST also integrate to older Nortel PBX platforms, or do they have to be IP? No. We can support uh, pretty much, and I should have mentioned that, um, we, 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 we can support virtually uh, integration to pretty much anything, any, any switch that's on the market, uh, Nortel switch. 
Okay. Um, so will the CXE work with existing phones and hardware? So because we, and I want Phil to get some questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, what, what uh, the, the short answer is, because we're integrating to the switch, uh, whatever the switch is, um, you know, whatever the switch uses for sets, for handsets, uh, we, of course, you know, we would be able to deliver calls, messages, et cetera, to that, to those, uh, to those devices. And I think, Hardy, that's, that's one of the, the nice things about this solution is that you, know, you, you don't have to touch the expensive part of the investment, which is, you know, the sets, the wiring, the core, you're just adding this on, you're adding on essentially a functionality element that works with the switch to provide those. And, and I think that the other side, to, you know, both of those questions that's really important is that it doesn't change the, the user experience. It enhances it, but it doesn't require you to go out and retrain your employees, give them a different experience. And, and you know, the TDM question is actually a very interesting question. I, I was actually... Um, doing some work and looking at, at, for example, the German market, where it turns out TDM has remained very dominant. The movement to IP has been a lot less. And I think what you're finding is a, a lot of the install base that has TDM um, has realized that there's not a great benefit in jumping to IP just for phone sets. If all you're doing is running a phone set with the same functionality on the data network, um, there's no real value in replacing that existing TDM set with a wire that's in place, a set that's been paid for, and a, and a uh, call a line card that's been paid for. Why would you move to IP? And and again, this is a way of essentially avoiding that investment, that confusion, that challenge for your employees while giving them an enhanced set of capabilities. So I think it's it really is exciting that you can do this without having to change out those components, which is a lot of the challenge in making a migration. Uh, I would, and I would say alternatively, um, and I'm not disagreeing with you, but certainly, you know, we're doing many, many upgrade scenarios where, you know, it's a brand new Avaya system with an AVST um, on a migration. So. Oh, a absolutely, and I, and I think that, and again, that comes back to that evolve point, which is, Correct. you know, if you decide to do, you know, you decide, hey, I want to do this today, and, and a year from now, you make the decision, you know, to put in a new Avaya system to make a move to another vendor. It's very easy to do that with the uh, with the AVST, AVST platform in place. Um, in right. fact, I, I worked with a very large, um, one of the largest um, Avaya transitions to Aura and SIP, and they had at their core an AVST um, messaging system, which they retained through that transition because they were very happy with the way it worked and had, ver had no interest in replacing it and changing it. So, absolutely. Yeah, we've actually seen some, to your point, you know, with the centralization capabilities of the product, solve the short-term problems, put yourself on a path of centralization, you know, you see upgrades or transition to a new, you know, uh, telephony platform, and then possibly move to the cloud. And that's all, and that's really your 3D strategy, and, and we've seen it unfold. And, of course, as you know, Phil, the larger the enterprise, uh, the more complex, the more sites, uh, the more mission criticality. Um, that is absolutely an evolution. You're not going to change out a 40,000 user, you know, customer uh, in, in a month. It's going to take time, and so you need to have both systems alive for some period of time. And the AVST becomes that bridge in the middle to basically get you from the, you know, the past to the future, which is, which it really works well. So, super. Okay, and you all just uh, have basically already started answering this question, but I'll ask it again anyway in case Phil wants to clarify. So. Um, Phil, in the context of your Evolve slide, um, can you expand on Evolve? What values do you feel are important? So, I, again, I think that, you know, the, clearly the messaging values are important, but, you know, the, the great thing about this is, for example, if, if your users start using the mobility features that are, are part of the platform, the, the AVSD platform, or start using the personal, the personal attendant, you know, which basically, um, gives you notification of who's calling you, um, provides kind of automated responses to them. I mean, they can continue to use those even if you migrate to a new platform. Um, you know, and also I think the, the last point that's really, I think is something to think about is this whole concept of, you know, the CEBP integrations and the ability to actually integrate a business process. Again, if you invest to do that today, when you migrate to a new platform, that investment can continue into the new platform. So it really is a way of 
when you make a platform change, not having it be nearly as disruptive as it would have been without having that, that previous investment in place, you know, where you did the enhance and then you actually can carry those forward into the evolve. So I think it's a, a great way of, of carrying forward your investment and not having you know, a short-term investment that falls away when you make a change. Okay, thanks, Phil. Another question, um, Hardy, this one's about the, the call pilot and the ABST system. So to replace a call pilot, does CXE run on the latest version of Windows? Yes, we we are always running on the latest version of Windows, and when I say latest, um, you know we're all we we're very careful because of the size of our customer base that we're you know we're we're making sure that everything's qualified before we release it. But yes, we are always running on the latest version of the of the Windows technology. Okay, and we can certainly provide specific specifications Absolutely. on that um, Absolutely. as well. So, um, another question for Phil, actually. So, Phil, um, this comment is regarding your um, the vendor slide. That had the logos. Um, the the attendee mentions that he did not see Shortel on there. Um, did you leave them out of the presentation for a reason? Um, not really. I I think that's another viable option. Quite frankly, um, just it was space on the slide. I mean, there are other vendors like Unify um, that could have been on there as well. Uh, really, if you look at for the the larger enterprises that have a Nortel CS1K. Uh, those are probably the more um, often moved to options. Those short tail could very well be a viable option a, as well. And I think that I, I think in many ways that question actually uh, reinforces that challenge that I think users face right now, which is um, you know, the decisions you have to make. The choices are fairly broad, and they take you to different places in terms of the long-term capability and commitment. And so, again, there are a lot of options. And in, for many organizations, seeing exactly how the industry kind of comes together over the next few years is probably the best way of making a decision. And that allows you to keep that investment in place. On the other hand, if you've got a vendor you're looking to move to, the great thing is you can move there without having the investment you made not come with you. So it's, it, it's a great question. Yeah, and, our, and on my interoperability slide, we have Shortel. Uh, Alcatel, Lucent, Broadsoft, Gen Band, just to name a few of the others that right. Phil might have put on the slide, but for space reasons didn't. So, yep. those are all those are all uh, uh, partners in the sense that we support their technology with our interoperability. Okay, thanks, Hardy. Next question: um, We have thousands of users. Did you say that the CXE interface is the same as the Call Pilot? Correct. All right, another question. Uh, we currently use Microsoft Office 365 and eventually we'll go to Skype for Business for telephony and PSTN. Can CXE support both the CS1000 and Skype for Business at the same time? Uh, correct, yes. And again, we have lots of information on this on our website and we're happy to, to, uh, to, do, to, to, uh, to provide you a, a briefing on that. And also, and again, another area that we recommend uh, if for some reason you're just not sure, uh, we're happy to pilot the technology with you uh, as a customer or an opportunity, I should say. Um, and that's been, you know, that usually uh, is, you know, in, in some cases where somebody might be wanting to test the technology relative to a pretty high scale, highly scalable Skype for Business deployment. Um, that's where, you know, we're able to demonstrate uh, that interoperability quite, quite well. Okay, thanks, Hardy. So I'm just doing a quick scroll through the questions here, and the bulk of them, what's left, uh, look to be pretty technical. So we're going to take those offline and wrap up the Q&A now. So um, for those of you who submitted a question that was not answered, we will certainly have someone follow up with you within a day or so. And I will also let you know that um, we have a general email inbox. If you think of questions or um, anything, other follow-up items, you can email us at info at avst.com. Um, and uh, we'll look forward to answering your question there as well. Look for the follow-up email from us that we mentioned, which will have all the resources, the slides, the link to the recording, um, hopefully everything that you need to have the rest of your questions answered. Um, and just want to thank Hardy Myers and Phil at home once again for this great content. And um, that's it. We'll pretty much wrap it up. And have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much.
To learn more about AVST, please visit www.avst.com.